Most of you are probably familiar with the third commandment. You may not know that it's the third commandment because maybe the order is kind of difficult. I don't know. But you've probably heard at least, don't take the name of the Lord in vain. When I was a kid growing up, like most of you, you probably heard it as don't say, oh my God. That's a good thing. I don't think you should casually use the name of God. And I do think it's wrong to lower his name to a curse word or just to flippantly say the word God just because you can. Uh, you should have more reverence for God and who he is and what he does. We can all agree that that's a good thing, but I think there's actually a lot more to this than most of us kind of go into, or at least have heard or learned in Sunday school. That word take in the original language actually means to carry. So let's talk about what it means to carry the name of the Lord. For them, a way that they might understand it is as a messenger being sent from a king, they would bring a message to these people in the name of the king. So that messenger in and of themselves doesn't really have any power. They don't really have authority. But when they carry the name of the king and they say this king decrees that this should happen or requests your presence or whatever it is, they would understand that that messenger has power because of the name of the king. If you are familiar in the church at all, you know about the power of the name of Jesus. Philippians 2.9 says that every knee should bow at the name of Jesus that's in heaven and earth and under the earth. Every knee should bow. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. When you walk around and you carry the name of Jesus with you, when you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian, there's power in that. There's power over the devil, there's power over sickness, over disease, over poverty. It should mean something to people. I got God on my side. When you say, I'm a child of God, you say, God is with me. It means something. There's, there's some weight to what you're saying when God is behind you and when God is with you and when you carry his name. Here in modern times, we probably understand that differently. Uh, we don't have messengers, but you can understand the power in a name uh, just by you look around at what powerful names or influential names there are in America right now. If you're a NASCAR fan, even if you're not, you probably heard the name Earnhardt. Uh, Dale Earnhardt, famous NASCAR driver, died in 2001 in a crash. The Earnhardt name carries weight, especially in certain circles, in NASCAR circles, at the track. Dale son Carey uh, was able to drive in NASCAR, never really achieved the success that Dale Jr. did, but because his name was Earnhardt, he could get rides, and his son now, I think, actually races some, and because his name is Earnhardt, uh, he's gonna get rides and people will know him. Carey Earnhardt actually works in construction now, and there's a lawsuit going on between him and his, well, it's Dale's last wife before he died, over the name Earnhardt. He was building these homes and he was gonna call them like the Earnhardt Legacy Collection or something like that, but use his name, because the name was Carrie Earnhardt, to use his name Earnhardt. And she was suing him, because she technically owns the name Dale Earnhardt and any money made off of that name. If you buy a Dale Earnhardt collectible or a hat or a jacket, she gets some of the money for that. So she's saying that he's profiting off of Dale Earnhardt's name, but his name is Earnhardt too. So that's a whole thing, not gonna get into that. But you understand the power, the influence of a name. From Minnesota, uh, big local legend is Joe Maurer. Some people may not like him as much now as they did maybe four or five years ago, but his name carries a lot of weight. He signed a big contract and like a lot of athletes, I'm sure people want money or at least they want to help out their friends and their family around him. What Joe did, instead of just giving money to his brother, he opened a car dealership for his brother. His brother owns this car dealership called Mauer Chevrolet in Minnesota. Because the name is Mauer Chevrolet, they get a lot of business. A lot of people come there even though it's not even Joe Maurer that runs it, it's his brother, but that name Maurer means something. It has some kind of power and influence. So you can see that there is influence and power in a name. But as my buddy Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. When you have the power of someone's name, you also have the responsibility that comes with it. When my wife and I got married five years ago, she took my name. She went from Jocelyn Jelly to now Jocelyn Cohen. And with that, if I had any power or influence, she would have gotten that too. At our church that we went to, uh, I grew up in that church, went to school there, so the Cohen name had at least some weight to it. Not necessarily good or powerful or influential, 
But there were people that would say, jo Jocelyn Cohen, oh, I know the Cohens, are you? Yeah, I'm Josh's wife. But there's also a responsibility with that. If she were to do something stupid, uh, drinking or driving, and there was a headline across the news, Jocelyn Cohen, then people would see that and understand the relation to my family, or at least wonder, oh, is she related to the Cohens? And the Cohen name means something. She's not gonna do anything like that. But but she has my name, and so there's a responsibility with that. It's not a misogynistic thing. It's not a masculine dominance. She's got my name. She better treat it right. But I have her name as well. We're one. We have the same last name, Cohen. If I were to go to her work at DSW right now and throw things around and cause a big fuss and steal something or break something, and I were to say, I'm Cohen, I'm Josh Cohen, Every one of them would know, oh, Jocelyn Cohen. Oh, you related to Cohen? You to Jocelyn? Oh, and then they would put things together and I would ruin her name at DSW. Because when they hear Cohen, they think Jocelyn. So it's not about, oh, she took my name. We share a name now. We're one, we're a family, the Cohen name. When you carry someone's name and you carry their power and their influence, you also have a responsibility to carry that name correctly. This is what I believe they're talking about in the Ten Commandments here when they say, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. We are the bride of Christ. We call ourselves Christians. How are we carrying the name of Christ? In your life, are you an example of the Christ, of the God that you carry, of the name that you carry, of the God that you say you belong to? A lot of people today call themselves Christians. There's not that many people that actually look and act like Christ. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, that I do that every time. I know I don't. <laughs> I know I don't come off as Christ in a lot of situations, but that's so important to keep that in the back of your head. Whether or not you believe God is up in heaven, looking down, judging you, blessing you for right things, cursing you for wrong things, doling out punishment from heaven. He's not, by the way. But even if you believe that, forget about that for a second. Don't worry about the punishment of possibly doing something wrong, of sinning. But just think about the influence you have when you carry the name Christian, when you say that I am a follower of God, I am a child of God. What do people see in your lifestyle? Do they see the God that you claim to serve? A lot of atheists in the world, or people that hate God, want nothing to do with Christianity. It's not about God. They, if they knew God, they wouldn't have these issues with them. It's the people that claim to represent him that they have a problem with. And we as Christians have done such a terrible job representing the Christ that we claim to follow. That people look at us now and they say, if your God's like that, I want nothing to do with him. And I know that's a heavy burden. I feel the weight of that. If we are going to claim to be followers of Christ, then we need to actually follow him and we need to actually represent his name. There are benefits to knowing God, believe me, and following God and trusting God. And the name of Jesus is powerful and there is no demon in hell that can stand against the name of Jesus. And when you carry that name, you carry that power. But you also carry that responsibility. How are you gonna carry that name? What are you gonna represent to the world when you carry the name of Jesus? I don't say any of this because I'm so perfect and I do this all the time. I'm struggling like everybody else. But this is something that I try to keep in my mind. Something that I remember as a kid, I went to a Christian school, Maranatha Christian Academy, great school, by the way, if you got kids, send them there. Whenever we went on a field trip as a kid, or in high school when I took the soccer bus to an away game, they always reminded you, don't forget that bus says Maranatha Christian Academy on the side. Not only do you represent yourself, not only do people see that and you're representing the school, Maranatha Christian Academy, but the word Christian's right there. And that little thing that the teachers might have been using just as maybe a scare tactic to keep us in line stuck with me. And I remember that now. So just think about that. As I do, in the back of your head, when you are driving through traffic, maybe with a little fish on the back, how do you treat the people around you? When you are in line at the grocery store, how do you treat the clerk ringing you out? You pull over for speeding, how do you treat the police officer that pulled you over? How do you treat your parents? How do you treat your family, your little sister, your coworkers? If you call yourself a Christian, how do you represent Christ?